Hello, this is Lawrence, KL7L. Today we're going to talk about antenna matching and some of the tools and equipment that we use on this uh, new handband of ours, 630 meters, 475, which uh, some limited amount of tester gear that you'll need to uh, to tune up your antenna. This is a picture of, the, of what I've got at the moment uh, here in the woods and the forests of Alaska. It consists of uh, a Marconi antenna which is a, vert a vertical wire which does most of the radiating. It's about 65, 70 foot tall and that's connected to a, a capacity hat which in fact is a, uh, a uh, three wire uh, capacity hat about 100 foot long and then over here another 100 foot wire to end and this is all held up by trees. The capacity hat reduces the amount of inductance you need to resonate it to 50 ohms and also helps with the radiation efficiency. Why not? So this is a very short antenna compared with the, the wavelength in real terms and so we need to resonate it and to resonate it what we do is we have a series loading coil to tune out the capacitor reactants and we choose that length that's on a bucket and it's about a hundred micro henrys and then in series uh, for it is, is a, a variometer which actually adds or subtracts inductance to fine tune and we use a motor driven uh, motor sorry motor to drive that uh, that coil in and out of this coil in relatively phase and add or subtract the total inductance to bring it to resonance. So we've got uh, the first thing to do is we bring the antenna to resonance by adding inductance to the right figure. Then we've got an issue of matching uh, the antenna to 50 ohms and the way that we do it here and there's many ways of doing it is we actually tap up from earth, the ground area, uh, one or two or three or four turns uh, to get to the 50 ohm pot spot and that's important. Um, we need to match uh, or get the, the coil to match the coax and in our case we've actually tap up at about the two micro henry point which is about two and a half turns it's a bit sensitive like I tap every quarter to half a turn to get it to 50 ohms and depending on the environment with trees on the weather and temperature and what's happening around the ground this impedance of this antenna will change on a seasonal basis, well it does here anyway. So at the moment as it gets colder my losses are reduced and I actually have to tap down another turn or two or half a turn. In the summer when it's all green and leafy I have to turn up because the, the impedance is actually higher, the resistance of the system is a bit higher. At the moment it's uh, getting better and uh, the less lossy the system the more current the thing flows the more efficient it is. So that's what I'm using here, and it's particularly, uh, it's actually not bad. Uh, it's, it's, we're in the trees, which isn't particularly good. And in real terms, I'll just show you a picture of actually what this looks like, and then we'll talk about some of the equipment that you need to, uh, to, uh, to tune it, or can actually measure how far the, the antenna's off resonance or not. So, where are we? Let me get a spot here. There we go, that's it. So that's actually the, the variometer and this is the loading coil here with the turns on the bottom of the bucket and we tap up uh, 50 ohms on a couple of those turns and here's the variometer which is driven by a train drive and uh, that's actually driven by a cable back to the shack where I can actually uh, reverse, sort of change the polarity of the motor to drive this coil in and out. Um, the earth strap for the ground is low impedance ground strap for the earth radials and this is a common mode choke here for 50 ohms to stop anything going back up the coax on the outside. So here we go then we start talking about how to measure that your antenna is actually in resonance or not. This is the problem. There isn't a lot of test gear out there specifically for 475 you may have an SWR bridge which you monitor but it doesn't really tell you what exactly you need to do to tune it so a clever fellow called Jim Morantz M0 BMU has come up with a series of design over the years and sorry my hand shaking but anyway this is one called a scope match and what it does is it measures the resonance and also the impedance and tells you uh, what you need to do and it's quite clever 
it has um, uh, your coax comes in here from your transmitter. Uh, the the outer coax is actually earth uh, on the connector as it comes in, and then you have a toroid which has got 50 turns on it, which we'll show you in a minute. And uh, that uh, goes to one side of uh, an input of the oscilloscope. It's got a 50 ohms to match it across. And so this measures the current running through, and then we measure the voltage or a portion of the voltage between as a ratio between the antenna and ground. In this case we uh, measure 440 puff versus 540 puff. So that gives one volt out for every 50 volts of RF. And we put that into the other oscilloscope. And so we've got two inputs, a Y1 and a Y2, which we can look at the, uh, the current and we can look at the voltage. And the way that the ratios are done is if those two are in phase at the same magnitude your antenna is in resonance. If it's not we'll show you what you need to do. Let's, uh, what else have we got here? Right, that we're good. We've seen all that. So practically the device that we're going to take a look at now, the first one, is that uh, scope match. This is the, uh, the unit that I've built here by uh, M0 BMU. The input comes in from the transmitter and goes out. So it's just like a coaxial section in there which is used. One side's grounded, the other side of the coax isn't. And then uh, we have two sensors. The, the one you saw there for measuring the current and the other one measuring for the voltage. And that goes away to the scope here as an input. And you'll see that the settings for the scope are exactly the same. We have one volt per division here, one volt per division here. We're uh, displaying both the inputs, the, the X and the Y inputs on the screen here. And we're using a chop to display the two. And at the moment the two lines are very close to each other. So when we go to transmit, which we'll use uh, WSJTX here to, uh, to transmit. Uh, we're actually using a transverter here. I'll just show it to you in a second. Uh, transverter's sitting down here. So we actually drive um, this uh, FT850. And we're using split. So it looks like it's receiving on 475, but actually transmits. When we go to transmit, which I'm going to do now, We've got a tune over here. Okay, tune it is. And then the transmitter's changed to 10.474. So we're transmitting, uh, we're mixing 10 megahertz in the transverter. We've got a, a GPS derived 10 meg signal coming in the back. It mixes with uh, the 10 megs and produces 474 out here. There's filters and stuff. And it's about uh, 20 dBm coming out of here, which feeds the amplifier, which we'll show in a minute. Anyway, so we're, we're transmitting, and we're on tune, continuous transmit, and we're on 474.2 kilohertz. And so the RF's coming out of the, uh, coming out of the amplifier here, uh, through a, a filter unit here. So it's about 50 watts coming out of here at the moment through the filter which is a seven stage LPF and then it's being sensed uh, coming through here this is just a common mode choke coming out of here being sensed voltage and current and gets displayed on the screen here so if we move the, uh, the current one up you can see that there's actually two displays and you can see that the magnitude of the two displays is virtually identical. In fact, at the moment, uh, no, the uh, the current's slightly high uh, than the voltage. And what does this mean? Well, for impedance matching, current is higher than the voltage, which means that the driving impedance is actually slightly less because we're running uh, about 45 ohms at the moment. So, if they were 50 ohms. That those two amplitudes, the voltage and the current, be exactly the same. But because the current's slightly larger than the voltage, if you know your electronics, it means that my uh, 
my impedance is a bit low. In fact, it's 45, and I could tweak the uh, tapping on that coil, which we talked about a, go a minute ago. So that's impedance matching, and as far as resonance, you'll notice that the two peaks on the oscilloscope are virtually identical. I mean, they're, uh, they're together in phase. Now, what I'm going to do now is I have a little tuning box here, which uh, drives the volts either one way or the other down to that variometer drive you saw. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the receiver, the transmitter out of resonance, move it one way and the other by driving the motor and that coil that goes inside the other coil in and out, and watch what happens. So I'm going to flick this switch here, and if we take a look at, uh, we take a look, you'll see that the they start becoming separated. Whoops. It's actually a bit bright, but you can see that they've gone to the right, they've gone one way, see it going to the right, and if I move the uh, motor the other way to bring it into resonance, hopefully they'll uh, co join. There we go, and we're back together, and now the antenna is exactly in a resonance. So my, uh, my voltage and current phases of the signal are exactly correct. So we've now that we know now that it's resonant, uh, using the variometer here, the variometer drive, and we also know that because there's a difference in amplitude between the voltage and the current, that I'm slightly off. Because the current is slightly higher than the voltage, it means that my impedance is slightly low. And my guess is about 45 ohms, which means I'm slightly off. Now, to confirm this, there's one of the things you could do. You could use this old uh, Bird 43. It doesn't really tell you very much, except it tells you your forward and reverse power, which just shows it's not bad, is it? Um, but it doesn't really tell me what to do about it. Whereas this does. This, this tells me exactly that A tells me my impedance and also tells me my uh, uh, resonance as far as the phase of the antenna is concerned. Now earlier today I'd actually used this device here which is the AIM4170. I plugged in the antenna here and I took a sweep of, the an of what the, the antenna was looking like. And just to confirm this, this is uh, the, the graph that I got. This is the red line here is the VSWR. And this is the lowest. Imp this is the uh, the lowest part of the VSWR curve is here at around about uh, 476 kilohertz, showing an SWR of uh, 1.126 to one, and uh, the actual magnitude of my resistance or my impedance is <coughs> about 46 ohms. Uh, so I was right. We're just slightly less than 50. Hence why the current is slightly higher than the voltage. And so what we do is if we uh, tapped up a bit on the coil, half another turn, we probably could resonate it to 50 ohms. But we're so close anyway. Uh, and you can see here also the phase across is zero about exactly the same place. So this is the phase, this is the resonant point of the antenna here at 476 and it also reflects about the same time the lowest in lowest VSWR point, which is really good. So this is the, the scope match that M0 BMU and many other people have adopted and it is uh, quite a clever way of just looking at immediately. You can see whether A, if you're, uh, if you're two uh, sine waves, which are the same amplitude, should be for 50 ohms. If you put a 50 ohm termination instead of the antenna, those two are exactly the same amplitude and they're in exactly the same phase. But you can see the amplitude changes, you know your driving impedance is different. And if you see the two separated in phase this way or the other way, you know whether you're either lagging or leading and you need to do something about resonating the antenna. Now that's, that's one method. The second method, uh, we have a, a visual way of doing it and it's using this device here, which is uh, again G0, uh, so M0 BMU decided to uh, de design this one. And it does exactly the same, except it's it, without the scope. This one measures the phase, whether it's inductive or capacitive. And this one here measures the voltage and the current. So this is like the impedance side, whether a high or low. 
and we transmit if, uh, if we get a reading and we flick between the V and I and it's the same we know we're at 50 ohms if it's I is higher than V we know we're tapped a bit low if V is higher than I it's the opposite way around so we can tell what to do and then this way also with the variometer you can uh, tweak it out so hopefully when it's in the center you're exactly on resonance and the high low switch just refers to the scales on this meter here if, um, if this will run read correctly from about a couple of watts up to uh, nearly two kilowatts um, this uh, PA here that we're running on 475 uh, to get to my 5 watts ERP from that antenna system uh, it will be anything from about uh, 75 watts in winter to about 300 watts uh, in summer due to the losses of the vegetation you know nesting a, a vertical antenna in the, the forest isn't particularly a good idea so I have to vary my output power when I see the losses and the, the, the radiation strength and stuff like that I vary my output power to keep within my license requirements of 5 watts ERP uh, what else just before I go so the other band that we operate on is uh, 137 kilohertz and we can drive uh, both the 475 or the, the amplifier for 137 this is a DECA unit the DECA 5501 and uh, you put a about a 15 dBm signal square wave or sine wave at frequency in it and you can produce about 1.5 kilowatts out of these uh, three modules and that drives a big loop antenna I've got uh, out in the garden again about 50 amps of loop current well that'll be a subject of another uh, another video here anyway, so I can drive the, the these uh, the both of the, the 475 and the uh, 137 using uh, the hands uh, QRP uh, the ultimate uh, QRP labs ultimate three transceivers one for 137 and one for 220 meters and we use uh, GPS uh, signals to keep the this is again part of the kit and it's a QLG1 which uh, drives the, uh, the, uh, the timing and the frequencies things for the, uh, the Ultimate 3. So that's one way of doing it. So we can run Whisper and some of the other modes off that. And then uh, if not, we can use a series of transverters. Uh, well, I think we showed you the one for uh, 630. And this one I'm working on at the moment. This is the transverter for the 137. Uh, kilohertz band and I'm working on that at the moment it produces it's going to produce a 12 12 volts peak to peak square wave to drive that uh, that decker amplifier so things on everything is roughly resonant and uh, we just need uh, better radio conditions it's been a bit uh, a bit poor up here we did manage to uh, to work uh, using whisper today this morning just before dawn down to uh, to JA and uh, I got my first report on 137 kilohertz today from down in Washington State so I'm very pleased with that so that's the tuning tools that we use uh, to resonate and keep an eye on the, the system on uh, 475 kilohertz and 137 and uh, we'll wish you 73's and we'll turn the transmitter off from uh, here in Alaska this is KL7L Lawrence wishing you best of the day. Cheers.